please welcome Jeff Beer, founder of the Embedded Vision Alliance. Good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Welcome to day two of the 2016 Embedded Vision Summit. I'm Jeff Beer, founder of the Embedded Vision Alliance, which organizes the Embedded Vision Summit, also president of BDTI, an engineering services firm. Some of you just arrived this morning to the event. Some of you were in our uh, really, I think, quite excellent deep learning and cafe tutorial yesterday. So I want to recap uh, what I took away from the excellent presentations we had in this room in the Business Insights track yesterday. Um, we started with uh, our keynote from Jeff Dean of Google, which I thought was absolutely fascinating, talking about how uh, deep learning is permeating Google's products and the direction that Google is, is heading in terms of enabling uh, deep learning infrastructure with TensorFlow and focusing on efficient deployment of neural networks both in the cloud and in the edge in things like mobile devices. Uh, then we heard from Bruce Daly from the market research firm Tractica with some interesting perspective on market trends for vision enabled markets that are using deep learning. The number that really stuck in my head there was his forecast of more than $10 billion per year in software revenue for deep learning in vision applications in markets like advertising, agriculture, and manufacturing. Uh, we then had Chris Rowan of Cadence share, I think, some, some thought-provoking predictions about where deep learning is heading. And the, the idea from Chris's talk that I like best, it really stuck with me, was his forecast about sensors. If, if, you, if you weren't here, Chris showed a forecast from a market research firm of the volume, unit volume shipments over the next, I don't know, six or eight years of all types of sensors, everything from a temperature sensor to an image sensor. And of course, they're all growing. They're all in the hundreds of millions, if not billions of units already. But then he weighted those volumes by the amount of data that each sensor type typically produces. And the conclusion that arises from that weighting is that in the future, approximately 100% of data that comes from sensors, deployed sensors, will be image data. Pretty thought provoking. <clears throat> then we heard from Raj Tuluri, a senior VP at Qualcomm who said that in the next five years, almost nine billion smartphones will be shipped. I, my, my mind cannot comprehend nine billion. I tried hard, but it's a, it's a lot. And to me, the significant thing there is all of those smartphones are platforms for embedded vision, right? In fact, they're all already doing embedded vision for things like photography apps. And now they all have the potential to do more and more sophisticated vision things like visual search um, as we learn how to efficiently implement things like convolutional neural networks on mobile and embedded processors. Um, then we heard from Peter Shannon of Fire Lake Capital Management, who may be the only venture capitalist who's actually written computer vision code earlier in his career. Um, and the observation, the insight that I really took away from Peter's talk was something that he has realized in his discussions with entrepreneurs that they often overlook, and that is computer vision software is hard. Computer vision problems are hard. It's not the same as developing a photo sharing application or something like that. From a 50,000 foot entrepreneur investor view, it may look very similar, but the key difference is in computer vision, we're trying to do inductive logic. It's a much harder problem. And so we need to be prepared with the right expertise and the right resources, including the right amount of time to get a vision-based product built. Um, speaking of the amount of time needed to build a vision-based product, uh, Paul Krzyzewski of Wrench uh, made some interesting parallels between his experience in the evolution of the video game industry, video game software development, uh, and computer vision software development. In the early days of video games, if you wanted to build a video game, you wrote assembly code. You built the whole thing from the ground up. That's kind of where we are 
with computer vision today. Not that we write assembly code, but we're working at a very low level of abstraction, generally speaking. Today, if you want to write a video game, you don't actually write code for the most part, right? You get an engine like Unity, and you're really focused more on the gameplay and the look of the game than writing code. And with engines like Unity, you write the code once, and it runs on all the platforms that are interesting. And Paul theorizes that computer vision software development will follow a similar maturation trajectory, and then that will enable orders of magnitude more developers, product creators, to build computer vision-based products. And I think that's true. Next, we heard from Andreas Gall from Silk Labs, former uh, Mozilla CTO, who pointed out that as we have more and more powerful embedded processors, more and more we have the ability to put intelligence at the edge. We have the choice of putting intelligence at the edge or putting it in the cloud. Of course, there's some applications where we don't have a choice. For automotive safety, for example, you don't want your car conferring with the cloud to decide whether to apply the brakes or not. But for many applications, we do have a choice, cloud, edge, or combination of the two, as, as Jeff Dean pointed out. And Andreas highlighted the trade-offs associated with security, privacy, and training, training data for machine learning-based solutions associated with, those, with that choice of cloud versus edge intelligence. Uh, then we had a very dynamic presentation from Stefan Heck of Nato, who almost made me want to cry when he pointed out that it costs actually about $3 a mile to drive my car, and about 99% of that cost is wasted in various ways. Uh, and that in the U.S. alone, there are over 30,000 fatalities a year caused by automobile accidents and well over a million a year worldwide. Obviously, computer vision can help. Obviously, with the safety challenge, but not only with the safety challenge, also with the efficiency challenge by enabling cars to use the roadways more efficiently and for people to use cars more efficiently. I think that's really promising. And then finally, we heard from Alan Rush of AMD, who pointed out some of the ways in which computer vision is absolutely essential to augmented and virtual reality, to deliver really high quality user experiences. It's not enough to have convincing graphics, high resolution displays, high frame rates, and so on, but we need the computer generated visuals to be fully in sync with the real world. Uh, as we move our heads, as we move our hands, we want to be able to use our hands in a virtual world and so on. And I think that's an important insight that even though in VR you're totally immersed in the virtual world, you actually have to be connected to the real world for it to be a robust uh, experience. So I think a really great lineup of presentations uh, yesterday. Um, we also uh, had our deep learning and cafe tutorial next door for the full day. I think it was a long day, but from what I heard, a very productive day with the team from the Berkeley and Vision, uh, sorry, Berkeley Vision and Learning Center. And deep learning, of course, was permeating the program yesterday. It won't be as pervasive today, but it'll be uh, still quite present, uh, including a talk by Pete Warden of Google on the TensorFlow framework at 1045 this morning in the enabling technologies track. Um, that enabling technologies track takes place in the Vision Technology Showcase at the back of the exhibit hall. If you visited the Vision Technology Showcase yesterday, you also saw that deep learning was really pervasive there among the 50 or so companies showing demos. Uh, it seemed like virtually everyone was showing some kind of deep learning based demo. Uh, our colleague joked with me that you couldn't swing a dead cat in the showcase yesterday without it being recognized by a deep learning demo. <clears throat> why, are, why so much deep learning content yesterday and on the showcase floor? Well, product developers are very interested in this topic. The Embedded Vision Alliance surveys vision product developers about twice a year. Uh, most recent, uh, the most recent survey was late last year. And uh, what we saw was about a third of the respondents. And I want to explain that these are people working in industry developing products, so not graduate students or people just curious about the technology. So of the vision product developers working in industry, about a third are already using deep learning, either extensively or in a minor way, in their product development, and about another third plan to 
use deep learning in the near future. So there's a lot of interest. Most people don't have much experience with deep learning, and the Alliance is trying to help people get the expertise and the perspective to understand where to use it and when to use it and how to use it. <clears throat> Another uh, interesting tidbit from the, the most recent developer survey is the pervasiveness of OpenCV. OpenCV is, uh, I think, more popular than chocolate. Uh, almost everybody who does computer vision software development uses OpenCV in one way or another. And uh, this is why I'm really pleased that we have Gary Bradsky, Mr. OpenCV, the original uh, founder of OpenCV project back when it was an Intel uh, project and now head of the OpenCV Foundation here this afternoon to give us an update on what's new in OpenCV and where it's heading. That'll be in the technical insights track this afternoon. Um, if you were not paying attention to, uh, to social media feeds yesterday, you may have overlooked uh, quite a few product announcements that were made. Several were mentioned briefly during some of the presentations yesterday, including uh, the new release of OpenVX uh, 1.1 specification, which has just been released, a new processor, uh, silicon IP processor core from Cadence, a new uh, machine learning SDK from Qualcomm, and several new developer resources from Movidius focused on uh, neural networks for vision applications. And you know, that's just what happened yesterday in terms of product announcements. I think that what this shows us is that there's accelerating innovation in the enabling technologies uh, that allow us to build practical vision-based systems and applications, accelerating investment and accelerating innovation in those building blocks, the processors, the sensors, the software development tools, the frameworks, and so on. And all of that will be on display today in the technology showcase in the main exhibit hall opposite the, uh, or adjacent to the registration area. Um, the demos will be open from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., including a nice end of day reception uh, with food and drink from 5.30 to 7.30. And in the back of the exhibit hall today, is uh, there's a theater set up, and that's where our enabling technologies presentations uh, will take place. We try and keep the main tracks uh, of the program educational and not promotional, but we know that many people are here to find out about the commercial products that are available to help build vision applications and systems. That's why we have the showcase with uh, 50, 60 demo companies doing demos, and now we also have a, we'll have a series of presentations there throughout the day today where you can learn in more depth about some of these key enabling technologies, deep learning frameworks, processors, algorithms, and so forth. So speaking of the, the program, after this morning's keynote, we'll have a 15-minute break, and then the program will split into four tracks. Uh, the business tr insights track will be similar in focus to what we heard yesterday. Uh, high level view of technology trends, challenges, market opportunities, market forecasts. Um, the technical insights track will be next door here, out the door here to your right. This will be, all of these will be 30 minute presentations, uh, presentation tracks. The technical insights track, tr track today will focus on techniques techniques for developing vision solutions, focused on algorithms and Im implementations, system trade-offs. The enabling technologies track I mentioned will be in the, the showcase, uh, the exhibit hall, and the showcase uh, itself will be open throughout the day. I especially invite you to join us for the end of day reception. Uh, there'll be, uh, that will open at 5.30 with uh, lots of food and drink and it's definitely a better option than getting on Highway 101 at 5.30, trust me. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. Um, finally, on Wednesday, tomorrow, we have two hands-on full-day workshops. I'm sorry to say that they are both sold out. Uh, however, I just found out that there will be an additional OpenVX workshop for those of you who are local or who can travel to the Bay Area. Um, in two weeks on May 17th 
in the afternoon at AMD in Sunnyvale. If you're interested in that, please note down the URL here, which will lead you to uh, an Eventbrite page where you can get further details on this uh, alter alternate OpenVX workshop uh, being hosted by AMD in, in two weeks. If you don't get a chance to jot down the URL or you lose your note, no worries. Check the Embedded Vision Alliance website, and by tomorrow, uh, we'll have a notice about this event up visible on the Embedded Vision Alliance website, so you'll be able to find it there. <clears throat> uh, lay of the land, you're in the red room. That's where the keynotes take place and where the Business Insights track talks take place. Uh, out the door and to the right is the blue room. That's where the Technical Insights Track 1 talks will take place, numeral 1. Um, around towards the registration area, but on the opposite side of the lobby, the Convention Center lobby, are rooms G and H. That's where Technical Insights 2 Track talks will take place this afternoon. Technical Insights 1 Track runs all day. Technical Insights 2 runs just in the afternoon. And then finally, the exhibit hall, which is just adjacent to the registration desk, uh, is where the technology showcase is happening. And in the rear of the technology showcase is where you'll find the enabling technologies presentations in the theater that's set up there. Um, if you're attending one of those workshops tomorrow, those are at the other end of the convention center on the second floor uh, in the rooms called the Great America Meeting Rooms. And there will be a new set of signs up tomorrow morning to guide you to those hands-on workshops. As always, if you have any questions, having trouble finding anything, ask any of the staff members identified by a black staff ribbon or carrying a walkie-talkie, and we'll be happy to help you. I want to thank, again, our lead sponsors, who, whose financial support has made this event possible. It covers most of the costs of the event. Please show your appreciation for them by stopping by their demos and uh, at the technology showcase uh, sometime today. Maybe swing a dead cat, see what happens. I also want to thank all of the member companies of the Embedded Vision Alliance who have helped to make uh, the Alliance possible and the Summit possible. Without the support of these companies, this organization would not exist and this event would not exist. The Embedded Vision Alliance is a partnership of technology supplier companies working together to help empower product creators to build products with visual intelligence. That's why the Alliance exists. That's why the Summit exists. And all of these companies have teamed up in the Alliance to help make this happen. I also want to thank all of our speakers yesterday and today. Um, I think they've been doing an outstanding job. And uh, frankly, we've been making their lives miserable the last couple of months, demanding early drafts of their slides, sending them uh, reams of feedback on their, their draft slides and so on. We've put them through the ringer. I really appreciate their patience and their diligence. Um, these folks have put a huge amount of work into these talks and we really appreciate it. To me, the quality of the presentations is the essential ingredient of the event and collectively speaker, the speakers have put in uh, thousands of hours over the last several months to make that happen. Uh, I thank you all very much for that. <clears throat> 